and welcome. David Levin here, Raise Your Inner Game today, and I have a cold, <laughs> and it's kicking my butt, and my voice sounds terrible. Sorry about that. And what are you going to do? The show must go on. So this is Tuesday, so we're talking sports and sports parenting. And this week we're talking also a bit about coaching and the number one mistake coaches and parents make when trying to help a kid improve their mental game. And the mistake is motivation. We try to motivate and inspire them to be better. And you might ask, why is that a mistake? How can that be a bad thing? And you're right, the impulse is a good thing in every way, but the strategy itself is a bad idea. And here's why. The first thing most coaches and parents try when they want to help their athlete raise their mental game is to, again, use motivation of some kind. We say things like, you can do it. I believe in you. You're, you're a winner. You've got this. Or maybe we take a negative approach. Come on, suck it up. Work harder. Shake it off. Just do it. And on one level, it makes sense to do this. It's what we know. It's what we've seen others do. But here's the problem with it, putting it as plainly as I can. Motivation doesn't work ever for anyone. Not really. Here's the thing. If a player's mental game is holding them back, they know that already. <laughs> no one needs to tell them that. No one understands the gap between what they're capable of and what they're actually doing or the huge difference between what it feels like in practice when they're having fun and loving the sport and in competition when it's honestly not fun anymore. No one knows that better than they do. And I just started watching the uh, documentary Breakpoint about pro tennis on Netflix. It's great. And this is the main point of what I've seen so far. They know what they're capable of and they know what keeps them from playing at that level. It's all the mental game and they're super clear about that. And by the way, they hate it. It makes them feel like a loser, even at that level. Top 10 players in the world, it makes them think they just don't have what it takes. And if they knew how to fix it, they would have done it already. The problem at every level isn't that they lack motivation, it's that they lack knowledge. They literally have no idea how to fix the problem because no one's ever shown them how to do it. And until they do, trying to motivate them will actually have the opposite effect because it just reinforces the idea that something's wrong with them and that they're just too weak or distracted or whatever to fix it. Bottom line, motivation without skills is demotivating and only makes the problem worse. So what should we do instead? Well, rather than just telling them what to do, we need to tell them how to do it, just like with every other aspect of the sport. When a golfer, for example, is working on their swing, trying to get more distance, uh, their coach doesn't say, you can do it. Hit that ball further. I believe in you. <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? No coach would do that, at least no serious coach. Instead, we work with them on the mechanics, body position, backswing, follow through, and the higher up they go in the sport, the more intense and detailed and sophisticated that work becomes. That is how to help a kid with their mental game too. Don't just tell them what to do, show them how to do it and work with them to help them master their technique. That's the approach we take with the sports academy and that's the way to make a difference in their mental game. It has to do with taking a mechanics-based approach and it makes all the difference. So that's what I wanted to talk about this week. Mental game training mistake number one, motivation. Motivation is great, it's a great impulse. Of course we wanna send positive messages to our kids. But if you really wanna help a kid improve their mental game, don't just tell them what to do and, what you, and that you believe in them. You also need to help them master the mechanics of how to do it. I hope that makes sense because it really is the biggest mistake and also the biggest opportunity to make a real difference for our kids' experience, for their success, and most important, for their happiness. All right, that's it for this week's episode. Apologies again for my scratchy voice. Hopefully we'll be back to normal 
next week. If you have teenagers in sports, check out our mental game starter kit. It's a great set of resources to help you start boosting their mental game. Just go to RaiseYourInnerGame.com, scroll to the bottom. You can learn about it and register there. It's all free, of course. If you like what you heard on today's show, please do tell your friends and rate and view us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to pods. Every review helps more people find the show and get the mental game boost and ideas and suggestions and tips and techniques they need. If you'd like to support the show so we can keep things ad-free, please click the Buy Me a Coffee link below and thank you for that. Uh, if you're listening to the audio podcast and you like video, we post all our episodes on YouTube as well. There's a link to that in the show notes. And finally, we'll close, as always, with Steve Prefontaine, legendary long-distance runner, and his quote from the end of the Raise Your Inner Game book, to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice your gift. Anything less than your best is sacrifice your gift. That's what we're doing. We're working to be our best, help our kids be their best, both on and off the field. So keep up the good work, and we'll see you next time.